Hello and welcome to the Digital Assets Report. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. With me today, David Wield, the CEO of Wield & Company. So welcome, good to see you again. Also Vincent yeah, Molinari, nice CEO of Temple you. Markets, hey, Jane. as always. So David, let's start with um, your background. You've been, this is a familiar place. You've been around the exchanges a lot in New York. Yeah, I've tossed footballs on the floor <laughs> with a former CEO of the New York Stock Exchange. So, and yeah. the NASDAQ, you've also been involved there too. I was vice chairman there for a, a number more than of years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And now you've got your investment bank, Right. Okay, so tell me about that wielding company. Well, we're turning the Wall Street model on its head. So we're actually supporting people in the cloud. There's been this great sort of implosion in terms of middle market investment banks. And we're actually going from a fixed cost model to a variable cost model, aggregating the human capital that we think is critical to support the growth economy and giving people a platform to basically work together more effectively on behalf of clients. Okay, and the cloud is super hot right now. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you just saw Microsoft's earnings, and anyway, it's really, really a hot space. So, and the Jobs Act, Vince, I know you want to talk to him a little bit about the role in that. Well, role in that, this is the father of the Jobs <laughs> Act. Uh, so, so this is terrific for me. You know, no, David, for quite a while, we, we certainly lobbied and advocated uh, in Washington for a bunch of years pre and, and, and post Jobs Act. And, and David's work had, it's had a huge influence on, on my thinking, some of the businesses that we've structured. So, you know, kudos to uh, David for all the great, uh, I'd say, uh, groundbreaking work around Jobs Act. I think what's really timely is Jobs Act 3.0 uh, passing the House uh, just last week. And, you know, I, I think revisiting of your um, initial work on venture exchanges mm -hmm. within that. Huge package, you know, due to the leadership of, uh, of financial services chairman Jeb Henserling and uh, Maxine Waters, enormously bipartisan, went through the House, I think it was 400 and some odd votes to four. Wow. When does that happen? I was going to say, you don't yeah. see that anymore. Now, especially yeah. today. Yeah. Now yeah. over at the U.S. Senate. So uh, uh, it's got a key piece of legislation in there that was uh, sponsored by Congressman Emmer of uh, Minnesota, which is uh, to create a new form of stock exchange, which will uh, create economic incentives in the aftermarket to better support small cap stocks. And we're hopeful that this venture exchange construct will ultimately go through the market and bring back the support that's required to bring back the small IPO in the United States. Okay, yeah. so I, I wanted to ask you about that because I know entrepreneurship is something that you're really trying to support uh, yeah. with your company. So how would that work exactly and, and what kind of size of business are you looking to work with? Well, I mean, if you look, we, we actually, our, our number of engagements actually has tripled over the last 18 months. We've got about 60 active engagements now and we're, and they range in size, I mean, literally from about two and a half million, which is some, a client that we think we'll do more business with on the, on the low end and an equity capital raise all the way up to half a billion dollars in size. That's with a B. So um, it really is uh, everything from fiber optic cable network, you know, builds to support uh, the, 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 the capacity that's required on the internet for the internet content providers to a lot of life sciences, major social impact kind of stories. I mean, things in cancer immunotherapy, uh, you know, these, this is a, what, what got me into the investment banking business years ago, which, you know, we used to call the God's work of investment banking, and so much of Wall Street sort of, you know, moved away from that. Right. This creates jobs. This creates progress for human beings. This is really important to get right, and our, our hope is that we're going to scale to such a large size that we will create essential infrastructure to support the U.S. economy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and this is like one way that you think that you can really help some of these smaller companies get financing and eventually go public on exchange like the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we just test cased recently a $100 million equity capital raise and we presented, we had an internal kickoff. We had 14 of our, uh, of our of the members of our network on there. They, they're supporting, they're, they're providing lists of their relationships. You know, as I like to say, uh, you know, the, 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 the the, the death of the human being in, on Wall Street is grossly exaggerated. You need people <laughs> okay. to kick yeah, tires, absolutely. to package things, to get on the on phones with with larger clients. And so, you know, we are uh, we are in the midst of uh, of uh, you know of uh, of really doing some I think pretty extraordinary things for smaller capitalization growth companies, particularly in private markets right now, but ultimately in public, in public markets. markets as well. And Vince, I know this is something you've been really involved in too, kind of the greater good of capital raising and uh, trying to just help fix some of the problems that we have in the world. Well, look, I, I think consistent with uh, 
David's mantra, it's entrepreneurship, it's innovation, it's job creation, right, which speaks to prosperity. It's one of the greatest, I'd say, assets that we have in the United States is our ability to lead. And when we can parlay that into doing some level of good, whether it's societal, environmental, and cause-related, and for-profit companies, tremendously powerful. And Congressman Henserling had a recent op-ed in the Wall Street Journal uh, talking about the importance of job, this Jobs Act 3.0. And, uh, and, and what was uh, one of the lines in there was is that we, we had the lowest number of startups in the United States in 40 years in 2016. And so if you don't keep your pipeline filled, right. how can you succeed as a nation? If, if you look at where we used to dominate the IPO markets, we were number one. China last year represented 30% of all IPOs in the United States was all the way down to 11%. So America is punching well below its weight. We're better than this. We need the toolkit now to be able to go out and fix and regain our place on the world stage. And this is absolutely critical if we're going to act, create the jobs, create the tax base, uh, the, uh, to be able to support uh, national security. Uh, and basically paint a better future for all of our kids. Sure. Now you need those young companies and young minds and innovative ideas and kind of the tinkering around with stuff that brings us the great companies of tomorrow. They're the ones that create the jobs. That's right. Yeah. So. And Jane, I think the other side of that, mm -hmm. and David, uh, curious of your opinion, but within Jobs Act 3.0 is uh, Congressman Swikert and uh, Congresswoman McCarthy right here from New York City, uh, their bill to expand accredited investor definition. And I think that that's really powerful to have more availability of potential people deemed accredited, not based upon just income or net worth, but based upon their education or other things in the system. So uh, do you, you think that's helpful? Oh, absolutely. We're enabling assets to be basically put to work in a part of the economy that's absolutely critical for long-term U.S. success. Okay, and we've, we've, we've gotten away from that. We dropped the bottom out of the small I IPO market through this kind of maniacal view that low-cost trading would be a boon to, uh, to, to consumers. Mm -hmm. And in point of fact, what it did was, and poor people don't have money in the market, so they derive no benefit from low-cost trading, but they sure need jobs. And when there was a, 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 a book called The New Geography of Jobs written by Professor Enrico Moretti at the University of California in Berkeley, that essentially said that for every technology job created in the economy, there's five service sector jobs. There's also data that says that you put money through an IPO on the balance sheet of a company, they employ people, those people spend money mm -hmm. in the economy. There's a multiplier effect. You employ accountants, attorneys, uh, restaurant workers, dry cleaners, so on and so forth. And so the, the cumulative effect is that the wage labor rates and the low end of the economy start to improve. You take people who have heretofore been on the bench unemployed in the economy and you give them jobs and they learn and their quality of life and their outlook absolutely improves and so uh, ironically the, the in the interest of saving consumers money on transaction costs what we actually did was we threw a lot of people out of work hmm. and um, so I think well you know this this uh, people ask me what was the big contribution to the Jobs Act and I like to say it's not the act that I would have written if they'd given me the pen <laughs> you know, it's a little frustrating, but but what's happening is it's changed the the discussion, and no uh, and 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 there's lots of people they are really looking at the numbers now, and figuring out how to kind of lift us up from the bottom, and uh, so I'm actually cautiously optimistic that we've turned a page uh, in history and we're really moving. In, uh, in the right direction, finally. It's, it's a slow process. It took us 15 years to really screw up our markets. <laughs> it's going to take us 15 years to fix them, but, yeah. but you know, as people like to say the pendulum swings. <laughs> no, it's because guys like us get off our butts and we push the pendulum back in the other direction. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to show, you have to show up. And you got to start somewhere. You got to start you gotta somewhere. Change. If you're going to change, Absolutely. you got to start somewhere. Thank you so much, David, for coming and sharing this and for your work on the Jobs Act and That's future pleasure, generation. Yeah, yeah. I think we need to schedule uh, interview number two as we have Jobs Act 3.0 going through the process, so we have some real right, time and updates. Right, and updates, and kind of yeah. how's it, where is it working, and where does it need help, and, and all that. So Correct. that's great. Thanks, David. Thank you as well. Thank you. And thank you also for joining us on the Digital Assets Report. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. Have a great day.